Welcome everyone to what is probably the very last video you'll ever see on the Audi A4 B8 that I have because it's for sale. But I have to do something because there was a bit of a mishap when I went to sell the car. First of all though, welcome to Figure It Outie if this is the first time you're tuning in. Hi, my name is Steve. You can find me on Instagram at Figure It Outie for some little project updates between major releases on the channel. But today we're installing this, this little package. It's only about 30 bucks. This is the RKX Tech vacuum pump rebuild kit. So here's the deal. Someone was coming to see the car. It had been sitting outside, not being driven for a couple of weeks at this point, but otherwise was running perfect before this. And I figured, eh, if he wants to come over, let me pull it into the garage a little more comfortable. Start the car, pull it around the back. And by the time I pull into the garage, about 30 seconds later, there is smoke billowing from under the hood. It only took a little second to realize what was going on. I could see on the very top of the cat, it looked like there was something wet that was clearly just burning off. And straight on top of that is the vacuum pump that's on the back of the head right there. And the signs were pretty obvious right away that we had an oil leak. There was a little bit of oil overspray down on part of the, uh, the vacuum outlet hose right there. And I could see that things were looking just a little bit grimier than normal, meaning that oil was spraying in this general area. This is a super common problem on these cars. And it's one where you can jump to solutions really quick because yes, odds are really, really good that it's simply the black metal gasket, which is a bit of like a crush gasket. It's not one you're supposed to use over and over. If you take off the vacuum pump, you should replace it. Odds are really good that it's leaking out of there straight down onto the cat. But technically these vacuum pumps have a back casing to it too. There's a little cover on the back and that can leak as well. So you could buy that 12-ish dollar gasket on the back of the head, replace it and hope for the best, truly, and that might work for you. Or you could buy this little kit and you get so much more all at once. For reference, this is the kit that I purchased. There are many options on their website. Be very careful about which ones you get. Really the key is to find the partner that's on the back of your vacuum pump in the car and use that as your de facto reference point for which kit you need. So what you have here is the black gasket that is probably our problem and what you're gonna be wanting to replace no matter what. But the other important addition is this high pressure fuel pump O-ring. The fuel pump actually kind of sits in the side of the vacuum pump and you're gonna to have to take it out. And when you do that, it's just really, really, really good idea to make sure that you replace this O-ring. But these over here are actually the bonus ones that make this kit worthwhile. So this little green guy right here, that goes into the port that's gonna be sticking out of the vacuum pump. And there is no Audi part number for this. This is just part the RKX kit uh, has sourced for you to make your life easy. And likewise, this big one back here too. This is what's gonna seal the cover plate on the back of the vacuum pump. Again, you're not gonna find a factory part number for this. A couple of setup things here before you get going. One, I do have the car lifted on my quick jacks, but that's just so I can elevate the car to a more comfortable working height, so I'm not hanging into the engine bay, but you can absolutely do this job with the car on the ground, that's no problem. Number two, obviously you're gonna be working around the cat, the exhaust, and the engine itself gets hot, so just make sure the car is cool enough to work on. Even the oil itself is gonna be spilling out of the back of the head a little bit when you take off the vacuum pump, and you know, it's hot, don't burn yourself. But number three, probably do something to relieve your fuel pressure. The quick and easy way to do that is actually just removing the fuel pump fuse that's in the panel right there. You can take a little trim tool, much like this, and there's always a couple little clips, and you just pop, 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 and eventually you will get this little plate off and Audi makes it really easy. There's a whole list here of fuses and it lists which position, what color, and what the amperage of that fuse actually is. So you can just take this little tool that's stuck on the top, your little pincers, and go in here and pull out the fuse. Then just get in the car, start the car as you normally would, and don't worry, no harm will come of the engine. The fuel pump just isn't running anymore, so it'll suck all the fuel that's out of the lines. It'll be depressurized and the car will just naturally die. Then you can turn off the vehicle and get to work. I've removed a couple more things in preparation for the project, but it's for me to work around the limited tooling that I have. So you're gonna notice that things are loose and things are missing, like the PCV valve, and it's because of my socket right here. So to get at these bolts, you will need a 12 point, so that's why we call it a triple square socket. And uh, I suggest getting a quarter inch drive one. Mine is three eighths, and because of this body thickness here is a little bit thick, I couldn't get around the, the plastic body of the PCV to slip this in here. So if you are prepared the correct way, you will be able to get your fitting in and you'll be able to access it from out here. But this is simply what I had to do. The other decluttering I did was I obviously removed the upper PCV hose that usually connects to the PCV valve, so that's out of the way. There's usually an engine hook that's held into here by an M8 triple square, and I got rid of that. And actually, I'm gonna remove this fuel line that's coming off of the high-pressure fuel pump as well. Obviously, we've just got that little clamp to get rid of. 
and then you'll unclip it out of plastic, plastic, and on this side, it's actually just a pull fitting. So pushing towards the passenger side, pull down the clip, and this will pop right off. So we'll get all of this out of our way. Things are loose as a goose. So the entire fuel and uh, airline back here that's all connected on this one sort of single pathway is uh, ready to get pulled out in a second, but do note that you have to remove two more Torx headed bolts to do that. They just fit here and back there. And I wanted to talk uh, yet again, as I love to do, about my mini ratcheting bit wrenches. So there's lots of times on all the European cars where you only have about the width of the bit itself to work in behind, you know, near the firewall or something like that. And you're just going for like one tooth at a time of rotation. And I found that these are so handy. In fact, I have a whole collection and they all come in handy in different ways. I've got sort of this offset gear wrench one, this uh, big headed one, my super, super thin one, and my rotating ball headed socket too. And uh, I'll put the link of my favorite ones into the description of this video for their Amazon links. Now I do have a warning that I want you to heed before we go ahead and yank out the two bolts on the fuel pump here. You might be tempted to just zap both of them out, but what you have to know is that the pump itself is driven off of a giant lobe that's actually also on the front side of the vacuum pump right there. And there's a huge high tension spring. So basically as the lobe turns over, it actually pumps the fuel pump. But because we don't know necessarily what rotation that cam is in right now, there could be a huge amount of tension on these two bolts right now. There could also be zero depending on your luck, but what it means is if you just pull this one out and there is lots of tension on there, it might actually just shove the whole fuel pump this way and you could mar the inside housing of where it's connected and there's an O-ring in there that we know that we're gonna be replacing, but it's also something to keep in mind when we put it back in too. So what you wanna do is little bit by little bit, take out those two bolts so that you're essentially taking it out straight. I'm at the point now where my bolts are about halfway out and I can feel that there is tension on my pump. And I was gonna save this step for next, but it means that I do need to go down here now and take care of that flare nut that's on the bottom. So you wanna loosen up with a 17 mil wrench, the bottom, the silver nut, that's the one that actually spins, not the one on top of it. So you'll just turn that and it'll fall down lower onto the pipe. Now that the whole fuel pump assembly is out, you can get a good look at that spring to see that tension that I was talking about. But looking at the end, it's uh, pretty tough. You know, you wouldn't think a cam lobe rides right on that because it doesn't. And here's an important step. And actually this is a great reason to do this job in and of itself, because there is a very worthwhile piece of maintenance to do. Take your pinky, carefully stick your hand in that hole and pull out this little cam roller bucket. On the B7 models, the design is way, way worse, so they don't have a, a roller that is covered in oil like this. It's actually just like a thimble, you know, like literally like a pail upside down, and the cam just like continually smashes into the flat face of it, and on the B8s, they upgraded to this roller method. You're just gonna look for uh, inconsistent wear on this thing. Mine's great, because I've done this uh, a couple years ago, just preventatively. And finally, we can take off the piece that we actually came here for. You're gonna be heading to the back, and you wanna take off these three 10 millimeter bolts that run all the way through. Just take off the ones that are protruding in the back. There are other fasteners, but they're just holding on the back plate of the vacuum pump. Don't touch those. You're just looking for the big 10 mils, top, bottom there, bottom right, that's it. It'll be a two hand job to do this, but it's actually easier to show you with this port already disconnected. But note the two tabs on the top and bottom of the vacuum port right here. You'll be able to depress those two tabs through these little windows. There's one on the very front and one at the back of the housing. Take a flat headed screwdriver, pop them in there and basically just pry against the housing itself. And you'll find that the port just kind of pops right out. With the vacuum pump out and things cleared out of the way of the engine bay, I've had a second to do some inspecting and I think I'm ready to make a diagnosis for this leak. Exhibit A, the staining down on the catalytic converter. It actually is quite far back and it drips down to the right. But if you go right overhead and look at where the vacuum port is, it is pretty much right in line. Exhibit B, the gasket that goes between the vacuum pump and the head is in relatively good condition. It hasn't delaminated, it isn't unevenly worn, there's no indications of severe hot spots. It looks like it was doing its job. Exhibit C is the pump itself. This time we're gonna be reading the dirt and the grease. So note that this is the top. It is absolutely caked, especially near this vacuum port right on the side right here. But on the bottom, it's, uh, you know, it's not too bad. Usually when you have a leak, it pools at the bottom because, you know, gravity. And although it is a little bit dirty here, it is not as nearly as dirty 
as the top, which means our failure point was towards the top. Exhibit D, back in the engine bay. The heat shield down at the bottom here, relatively clean, gets dirtier as we move our way back. The back of the head right here is also quite grimy, but it gets clean again as we move towards the other side. And you'll just have to believe me when I say I put a little mirror and a flashlight down there and the back bottom side of the head is pretty clean. Therefore, the culprit must be in this area. So to you, the jury, I submit that against all odds of normally that black gasket or the back cover plate of the vacuum pump, our true failure point was actually just that little orange O-ring on the side of the vacuum port. So I suppose lucky new owner for the B8, they are about to get a fully rebuilt vacuum pump even though it didn't really need to be. That's okay, I'm gonna clean it all up really nice in a second so I can walk you through that final install of the RKX kit. But yeah, if you ever see a leak back there, make sure you don't discount that little side port. Just a teeny little O-ring, that could have been it. Ooh, I just noticed a nice little bonus here of what cleaning we're gonna do. See that little oil screen that's down in there? It's all clogged up, so we'll take that out and clean it up as well. Now that the vacuum pump is all cleaned up and ready to work on, all we really have to do, and keep in mind this is model specific, but in this particular case, you've just got a couple of Torx bolts on the back. They're not held on with a terrible high amount of torque. In fact, the packaging on the O-ring kit tells you exactly what the retorque spec is for this back plate and when you're attaching the vacuum pump back onto the back of the head. Hmm, very cool. Although I know we're not here to talk about how vacuum pumps work today, and there are many different types, it is kind of cool to see the inner workings underneath the cover here. So we know on the other side, there's basically a little key that sticks into the back of the cam so that as the cam spins, this spins, and it also drives this in a circle. Nonetheless, our work here is uh, very simple. We are only here to replace this O-ring. And uh, looks like it's still really nice and squishy. Probably nothing wrong with this. That's okay, we've got a new one in the kit, and both sides appear to be identical so i'm just going to take a little bit of oil down here like any old o-ring would lube it up a little bit and place a new one back down nice looks like they've got a perfectly sized o-ring for this kit good job guys i'm just going to take a second here to clean up this back plate to make sure my ceiling surface is now really really clean and you even have instructions on the back of the rkx kit and it says to put the front cover plate down at seven foot pounds in the cases where I know an item is gonna be subjected to a lot of vibration, even if it doesn't totally call out for it. I do prefer to use a little bit of blue Loctite on whatever fasteners are going into the element. Another thing that you'll probably notice me doing in all my videos is I always uh, break fasteners loose by hand first and I also tighten them down by hand. There's just been too many times where I have uh, been tightening some sort of fastener and uh, with a power tool you don't notice that little bit of thread resistance once in a while that indicates that you might be stripping the threads or any other bad news bears that are happening and I like to seed it and get things exactly where I want them before I put down final torque. As promised, I also spent some time cleaning out the oil screen that fits in the little bucket right there. That little pile of schmutz is what came out of it. And uh, I wanted to show you something. Now this is gonna be a little difficult for the camera to focus on, but you might think that there is no hole on the back side, but of course there is. That little indentation is it though. It's, it's a very, very tiny hole. So if there's any bit of clogging going on in here, it's gonna have a significant impact. So again, if you're in here doing that job, don't neglect this screen. And of course, at the same time, we'll take care of the O-ring on the high pressure fuel pump. Now, although this is exposed to oil, kind of, sorta, in these particular cases, I actually prefer to lube up my new O-rings with a little bit of synthetic grease. And I do that because it is a, a repellent of sorts and uh, a lubricant as well. But I find that it uh, just does a good job helping the O-ring slide on, not twist on itself. And uh, fundamentally it should keep whatever is on the other side of it at bay. And of course, to finish everything off, I also installed the fresh O-ring down on our vacuum port. Heads up though really quick, before you get excited and start putting things back on, make sure this mating surface on the back is really, really clean. You will find old pieces of the black crush gasket, and you might even find some sealant that's squishing out between the cam cradle and the top of the head. Last thing, do note the position of the key that's in the back of the vacuum pump here, because obviously you can just turn this with your fingers. Now look on the back of the cam over there and see what position the cam is in. Obviously you could manually turn the engine over if you really, really wanted to, but by far the easiest thing to do is just 
take a look at what position, you know, 11 o'clock, up and down sort of, and clock it appropriately in the back of the pump so that when you fit it onto the back of the head, it just plops right into place. Installation time, and it's just the reverse of removal. I'll call out some of the torque specs as I do this, but time lapse for you, maybe an hour or two for me. The vacuum pump slips on easily because of the pre-alignment to the cam, and I torque it down to 10 Newton meters. The high pressure fuel pump bolts and the nut to the hard line beneath the pump both require 20 newton meters. The PCV valve bolts get tightened to a gentle 11 newton meters and use the following torque sequence. That's it, it's actually a pretty easy project. Started the car, she's purring like a kitten. And you know, usually I say the projects do take longer than you anticipate, but this one you really can knock out in an afternoon, which is saying a lot. In terms of the RKX kit, it's a good buy for about 30 bucks. It's an insurance policy to make sure that you have all the seals that you'll need. In my case, it definitely saved me. I never would have thought it was gonna be that little side port O-ring, but there it was, and I would have been caught with my pants down without this kit. And speaking of which, although it is about 30 bucks, you can always get 10 and 15% off. And I'm happy to just share this little tip with you from hindsight, this is not sponsored content. You can always get 10% off those kits on the website. There's a coupon that's always present. But if you put something into your cart and then wait for a few days, you'll notice that you'll get an email that says you can get 15% off. So you can squeak a couple extra bucks out of it. Even though this project wasn't terribly difficult, if you did learn something, feel free to throw me a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and follow me on Instagram once again for little updates. And if you wanna check out other things that I do on the channel, thanks again, see you next time. Yeah.